Welcome back to GNOME 101. This is part eight. And in this installment, we'll be talking about two of my favorite node types in Godot. Very simple, but massively useful nodes, between and the timer. So let's get started. So we have our player moving around and when we touch the gems, they just vanish. And now we'd like to add some visual effect to picking up to make it look a little nicer when we bump into the gem. To do this, we're going to use a new node type called a tween. So what is a tween? Well, tweening is also sometimes called easing. And this webpage, easings.net, is a great one to see examples of all the different kind of easing functions you can use. And so what we mean by easing is how we're going to get from a start position to an end position over time. And instead of using this you know, plain linear function, there's lots of different functions you can use. And you can hover over here and you can see the animation of how the effect works when the little red arrow moves from the start to the end. And when you're doing tweening or easing, you basically have two choices to make. One is which function you're going to use. So for example, this is the sine function. This is the cubic function. And there's all sorts of different ones, right? Bounce is one of my favorites. But then you also need to choose what direction you're going to apply it in. In means you're going to apply it at the beginning. Out means you're going to apply it towards the end. And then you can also do in out and have it apply at both ends of the curve. And by choosing different functions, uh, the back function is a really good one too. Once you go a little bit past the starting or the ending point and then come back. So you're going to choose which function you're going to use. And you're going to choose in what directions you're going to apply it. Okay, so we're going to take our tween here and I'm going to just call this the effect. Because we're going to use that to apply several different effects to our gem when it gets picked up. So let's go over to our script here and we're going to... We're going to get a handle to that to that node. So that we can apply it. And we're going to apply it to the sprite. So I'm going to go ahead and get a handle to the sprite too. Just so it'll be easy to reference. And we can apply the effects of this tween to pretty much any property of the sprite. You can apply it to not just to its location when you're moving things around, you can apply it to scale, you can apply it to opacity, to color, you name it, you can if it has a if it has a numerical value, you can apply a tween to it. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to first tell the tween what property we want to apply it to. And so to do that, we're going to use the interpolate property method. Okay, and that just says for some object, so we'll say the sprite, and then you name the property that you want to apply this to. Well, we're going to go down here. We want to apply this to the scale. And if you hover over scale, you see the property name there is transform slash scale. So that's the property we're going to say property transform so scale and then the next two arguments you put in here and I'm just going to continue this on the next line because this is going to get start to get kind of long is the start and end points so I want the scale to start at whatever scale it's at now right so it starts out the size it is and I want it to end up at a value of two. So it's basically going to scale up to double size. Okay. Then the next one is you need to put what duration you want. How long do you want to take it to get from one to the next? I'm going to put 0 0.3. We don't want this to be very long. And so the next two properties are which formula you want to use. So we're going to use the trans uh, quad one. And then you want to put whether you want to do in or out 
or out, right? So you can you can do any of these. We're going to use the ease out. Okay. So we're going to transform take the transform scale. We're going to start it at the size it currently is, scale it up to 2.0 over 0.3 seconds using the quad function in the ease out direction. Now right now we are deleting the gem as soon as it's grabbed, so we wouldn't have time to see this effect happen. So we, instead, we want the queue free to happen when the tween completes. So if we go to the node here, these are the events for the tween, and the one we want is when it's complete. So we're going to connect that to the script here and say on, on tween complete, we're going to queue free. So when the player grabs it, we want to just say effect.start. So this has been defined. When the player touches the gem, the effect's going to start. And when the effect finishes, the gem will be deleted. So if we run this, there you go. So see how it sort of scales up? Now our only problem is while that gem is scaling up, it's still on the screen. So if I move out of it and back into it really quick, I can actually score it more than once. And we don't want that. So while it's, after it's been touched and, oops, I closed that. After it's been touched and is playing the effect, we don't want it to be um, collidable anymore. So I'm just going to put clear shapes here. That what lets us remove the collision shapes from the object. So it no longer will be able to detect any area it enters. Okay, but we can do better and add some more effects to this. So let's also make the sprite fade out. So we look over here, we want to look at the opacity. And that's property name is visibility slash opacity. So we want to add another effect.interpolate property. And on the sprite, we're going to do it on visibility, opacity. And for this one, we're going to start with 1. We're going to end at 0. We're also going to have it last 0.3. And then we are going to use the same we're going to use the same trans quad, and we're going to use the same ease out. And I recommend, you know, you can play around with these, try the different settings and see what the effect looks like. But I think this will, this one looks pretty good, because now when we grab our gems, they sort of look like they are fading away when we grab them. Looks much, much better. Queens are fantastic. You should use them pretty much everywhere you possibly can. They always make things look better than just plain instantaneous effects. So the other really massively useful node that we're going to demonstrate how to use in this tutorial is the timer node. We're going to use that to make a game timer so that the player has a certain amount of time to collect the gems. So on our main scene, we're going to add two new nodes. One is on the HUD. We're going to add another label to display the time. So I'm just going to duplicate that uh, score label node, and I'm going to call it the time uh, label. And then we're also going to add, as a child of main, a timer. And a timer is just a, it's a very simple node. All it does is count down. A certain amount of time. And so a timer node only has a few settings to worry about. Wait time is how long you want that timer to run for. We're going to put 30 for 30 seconds. The one shot checkbox is whether you want the timer to stop when it reaches zero. If you leave this false, then the timer will restart when it reaches zero. So it'll count down another 30 seconds. So you can have a a timer that will make things happen every 30 seconds or something like that. But we want this to be a one shot because when the timer reaches counts down to zero, the game is going to end. It's not going to restart. 
and then auto start is whether that timer should start when the node is is created right when the scene starts and we're going to set that to on as well so now our timer is ready we just need to connect it up in our code go to our main script here we're going to we're going to add another reference to our time label here so that we can update its um, update its value and then we're also going to add the game timer is get node game time okay so now we have our new nodes referenced and we can set them up so we want the game timer is going to start automatically when the scene starts because we set it to auto start so we don't need to start the timer but we do need to update its value in the uh, in the label so that we can see it change so in our process here we can just update the time label and set its text and what we want is it has to be a string and we want it to be the value of the of how much time is left on the timer which is going to be a floating point number with a lot of numbers after the after the decimal point so we're going to convert it to an integer and it's the game timer dot get time left that will show us how much time is left so let's run it and see what that looks like so there we go we see our time counting down and now we just need to say what we want to do when the time runs out well to do that we can use the timeout event from the timer it's really the only event that timers send out we'll connect that to a function called on game timer timeout okay so for now what we're just going to do is when the game timer runs out we're just going to freeze the player so i'm just going to say get node player and i'm going to set process to false Right, if process is false on the player, then nothing will update. Now I've set my wait time to five on my game timer just so we can see how that works because then the game will run out quickly. And when it reaches zero, oh, my player now is frozen and I cannot move. So that's our game over condition, right? You can't go collect any more gems. So at this point, it would be the perfect time to put, you know, we could have another label here that says game over in really big letters set that to hidden at the beginning of the game and right here when the game timer runs out we set it to visible and then you would see the words game over on top I'll leave that to you to do I also suggest you think about other places that you could add a tween uh, a perfect place would be maybe when you collect all of the gems instead of them appearing instantaneously make them you know, uh, animate moving onto the screen or growing from a, a dot into the full size, anything like that. You can make use the bounce function to make them drop onto the screen and look like they're appearing. Uh, there's lots of different things you could do. So that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you start using tweens wherever you can to spice things up and make your games look a lot more appealing. Uh, please do comment in the comment section below uh, if you have any requests or suggestions for things you want to see in future videos, and I will see you next time.